AI agents as we know them are dying. So the complex over-engineered systems that we have relied on thus far, you know, the ones filled with prompts and rules and guardrails, they're becoming relics of the past. But here's the exciting part. The future isn't just about building smarter agents. It's about creating smarter environments for them to actually thrive in. And today, I'm going to show you where we believe that everything is heading, how we're getting ahead of the curve, and what this means for developers, businesses, and agency owners like myself who build AI solutions for a living. But first off, let's just start talking about these models themselves. So over the past few years, we've seen these models become exponentially more capable. DeepSeek's R1, Grok3, or O1, these aren't just better than their predecessors. They are completely different levels of intelligence when we're comparing specific models like O1s to GPT-3. And as these models actually continue to improve, they are starting to handle tasks that used to require entire teams of engineers and developers. But that brings us to a pretty important question. What is going to happen when these models get so good that they don't need all this extra scaffolding and building around them this far? You know, today we have to rely on layers of prompts and all of this logic that we have to build out and hard-coded rules just to make these AI agents function but as these models are getting smarter, all this complexity just isn't going to be as necessary in the future. And right now, frankly speaking, it's holding us back. So we have already seen signs of where this is headed. So we can take OpenAI's operator as an example. It allows these people to integrate these models into their own applications pretty much seamlessly and do the tasks that they were instructed to do for them. You know, like I need you to write an email to this person and send it off to this entire team. You know, so it's able to do all these things without needing complex engineering setups or custom architectures. So this is showing us that these models are becoming more autonomous and easier to deploy. And then we can take Lovable. So Lovable.dev, if you're not familiar with it already, it's a platform that is allowing you to describe what you want in plain language and then it generates the backend for you automatically. This isn't just some cool feature. It's a glimpse into the future where building environments for AI really just becomes as simple as describing your vision and what you need from it. So what does this really mean for the future? Well, as these models are getting smarter, the focus will then shift from engineering better agents to designing better environments for them to actually operate in. And instead of spending time tweaking and fine tuning these agents, we'll be focusing on creating ecosystems for them where they can actually thrive and deliver more real value. So I would argue that today's AI agents are just overly complicated machines. So there's tons of moving parts, but you know, at times there's just not much efficiency. And we've built intricate architectures to compensate for model limitations, but as these models actually improve, I argue is becoming more and more obsolete. Here's why. Imagine you're trying to grow a plant. Are you going to focus on, you know, genetically modifying the plant itself? Or do you focus on improving its environment that it is actually in? So that means better soil, sunlight, water. Obviously, the environment makes all the difference in the situation. The same approach we believe applies here within AI agents. So instead of spending time engineering better agents themselves, we should be designing better environments for them to actually thrive in. This isn't just speculation. We have pretty good reason to believe that this is where things are headed. So once again, operator and lovable, these are proof that building environments is becoming easier while models themselves are becoming more and more capable. Let's get into what exactly is an AI workspace or an AI environment. Well, let me just break it down for you in pretty simple terms. An AI workspace is like an ecosystem designed specifically for an agent to thrive. So it's not just a tool or a platform. It's a complete environment where everything the agent needs is available at its fingertips. So this is going to include tools, data sources, APIs, and even collaboration points. So for example, an AI agent working in a legal workspace, it has access to court databases, case law repositories, and internal document management systems. And these are all structured in a way that allows it to actually perform complex legal research without needing constant guidance. Here's where things are getting interesting if they haven't gotten interesting already. In today's systems, like things that we've built, like our Omni sales agent, the environment, it requires manual engineering. And I've built workflows in N8N that define how my agents are going to interact with CRMs, emails, calendars, and all these other systems. And this works well, but it requires significant effort to set up and actually maintain. And in contrast, future workspaces, we again argue, won't need this level of manual orchestration. 
So these advanced AI models will just dynamically figure out how to use these CRMs or email APIs without needing predefined workflows. And this intelligence, it shifts from manual engineering to model-driven reasoning. And these smart environments that we're discussing right now is what we believe the next era of AI is going to look like. But in any case, that brings me to what we've been working on. So as I just touched on our flagship product, the Omni Sales Agent. So this agent, it's not just another tool or just another chatbot. It's an entire workspace that's designed specifically for sales automation. But more importantly, it represents the future of how we will interact with AI agents across varying industries. So instead of focusing on engineering the agent itself, we've built an environment where the agent has pretty much everything it needs to succeed. So from accessing real-time data to seamless collaboration with human users. But here's the key takeaway. This isn't just about sales automation. It's about proving that smarter environments can lead to better outcomes. You know, whether you're in sales, healthcare, education, or literally any other field. And this doesn't necessarily mean that mine or your work today isn't valuable. It absolutely is. In fact, our Omni sales agent, it represents just an early version of what these future workspaces might actually look like. And let me explain why right now, I've built this environment manually, just using tools like N8N. I've orchestrated workflows that connect the CRM, email system, calendar, and databases into just one cohesive system. Then allows our Omni sales agent to handle tasks like lead qualification, follow-ups, meeting scheduling, all of that. Here's the thing about it. While this approach, it works very well today, it requires a lot of manual efforts to set up. So if a client needs change or they want new integrations or workflows, I have to go back in and make those adjustments myself. So it's effective, but not as dynamic as it could or should be. Now, these future environments, we believe will take just a step further by reducing or eliminating the need for manual engineering pretty much entirely. So instead of building workflows step by step, we will just simply give advanced AI models access to these tools and data, and they will just figure out how to achieve goals autonomously. So when I say that our Omni sales agent is an early version of these future workspaces. What I really mean is that it just demonstrates the power of integrating tools and data into a single environment, but it still is going to require some manual engineering. Now this next generation of environments will shift that intelligence into the model itself. Now this shifts towards smarter environments. It's not just theoretical, it's already happening across varying industries. So we could take Replit, for example. They've created a development environment where their AI agent can write code collaboratively with developers while accessing all the tools it needs within their space. Another example is in fields like medicine or finance. You know, custom workspaces are being built where agents can access specialized tools. So things like molecular visualization software for drug discovery or financial modeling engines for investment analysis. You know, this is all within one cohesive system tailored to their specific needs. So the shift again towards smarter environments doesn't just change how AI agents are going to operate. Literally, it fundamentally changes the roles of those building and managing these systems. So as someone who builds AI agents and automations for businesses, I've been reflecting on what this really means for agency owners like myself and others in this industry. So let's just talk about how our roles will evolve and what we can actually do to stay ahead of this all. So right now, much of my work involves manually building workflows. So for example, with our Omni sales agent, I've used tools like N8N to orchestrate how the agent interacts with different CRMs, what it needs to do, and you know all these different email systems, calendars, and databases. So this requires a lot of hands-on effort and defining triggers, setting up these integrations, plugging in those APIs, and just ensuring that everything is going to be running smoothly. You know, this is something that you've probably experienced yourself. But again, as these models become more capable, this manual engineering will just give way to environment optimization. So instead of designing these workflows step by step, you know, our role will shift to creating environments where these advanced models can reason dynamically and autonomously. For instance, instead of programming a workflow for follow-ups, I'll just provide the model with access to CRM data and let it decide when and how to re-engage these leads for us. Or instead of hard coding all these integrations, I'll ensure the model has access to these APIs so it can query on its own. Now, another major shift is the growing importance of domain knowledge. 
So in the future, success won't just depend on understanding AI. It will depend on understanding specific industries and their unique needs. So we could look at healthcare. In healthcare, you might create an environment where an AI agent can access patient records securely while complying with HIPAA regulations. Or in finance, you might design a workflow that just integrates financial modeling tools in real-time market data for investment analysis. So this means that as agency owners or developers, we need to deepen our understanding of the industries that we are serving. So the more tailored and specialized our environments are, the more value that we can actually deliver to all of our clients. And one thing that won't be going away is the need for human oversight and collaboration. So even as these models become more autonomous, there will always be tasks that require some human judgment or creativity. So our roles will just involve creating checkpoints where humans can guide or refine AI actions. So for example, in sales automation, a human might just review high stakes communications before they are sent out. Or in legal workspaces, a lawyer might validate an AI generated contact before finalizing anything. And this collaborative approach just ensures that AI remains aligned with all the human goals while leveraging its strengths and automation and reasoning. So you're definitely asking yourself, how can we actually prepare for the shift? Well, here are three things that I'm focusing on myself. First one, experimenting with emerging platforms. So tools like Replit agents that I already mentioned, they are already showing us what's possible when you design these smarter environments. So staying ahead just means experimenting and being at the forefront, you know, with these platforms to understand all of their potential. Number two is to build proprietary features. So to stand out in a world where automation is becoming easier and easier, I'm working on developing unique features tailored to specific industries, you know, things that advanced models alone can't replicate easily. So it's super important to become inimitable. And number three, educating clients about this transition. So many business owners, they don't yet realize how quickly this shift is actually happening. But by helping my clients understand the value of smarter environments in positioning myself as the expert in this domain and designing all of them, I'm ensuring that they see me as a long-term partner involved in the vision of their company and, you know, just making sure that I will ensure their company's success. So the death of over-engineered AI agents really just marks the beginning of something much, much bigger. You know, this is going to be a world where smarter environments actually unlock the full potential of AI. But here's what I want you to actually think about. The future belongs to those who are willing to ask bold questions. So like Satya Nadella once said, what is the impossible thing that I can make with what is coming? So this kind of mindset, it will separate those who will thrive from those who will just fall behind naturally. And as agency owners or developers working with AI today, our job just isn't just about keeping up. It's about staying ahead by embracing these shifts early on. So the businesses that will succeed will be those who don't just adopt these new technologies, but also lead their industries by rethinking how they can use these technologies and, you know, just utilize them in the most practical way. So ask yourself, how can I design environments that will make my clients lives easier? How can I create solutions that go beyond just automation and linear agents, whatever, and truly transform these workflows entirely. So if you are ready to be at the forefront of this industry, or if you want my advice on how your agency can actually adapt, then join my free school community. So if you are ready to be at the forefront of this revolution, I would say as cliche as it sounds, or if you just want advice on how your agency can adapt, your business can adapt, whatever it may be, how to be successful in this new change, then like and subscribe. I post all types of videos covering this type of stuff. Also join my free school community because I'm a lot more active in there and can actually respond to any of your questions and help you out there as well. But in any case, please like and subscribe. Drop in the comments what you guys think and your thoughts on all this stuff. Because I mean, this is all a bit theoretical, but we have strong reason to believe that this is where everything is heading. So again, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.